that my story may be your glory for all to see the greater one who lives inside of me. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Have y'all ever had pound cake? <laughs> How many of y'all in here had her pound cake? Clap your hands if you had pound cake. Clap your hands if you had cheesecake. Clap your hands if you had anything she made. Clap your hands if you give God praise for her today. I don't understand why y'all sitting here like you don't like her. I don't understand. And I'm going to be the one because y'all know me. I'm going to be the one to call everybody out. That's what I'm talking about. The wine, you love her. So why are we sitting here acting like we down and we sad? Yes, we miss her. But it's a celebration. We can't come to everybody's home going and celebrate. We celebrate her today. We celebrate her life today. I wasn't supposed to do that. Thank you, Lord. I said, I'm going to be cool. He said, I'm going to be cool. Father, I thank you. Proverbs 31 and 25 through 27 uh, and 30 through 31 are our primary scriptures for today. We'll move this up a little bit. It was down low because this guy's a little short. <laughs> Much love. Always picking up. Always. Um, those are our primary scriptures for the day. And I want you just to think about strength and honor. As Evangelist Maya talked about, I need you to look around the room real quick. Look around the room. Everybody here is here because of the, 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 the love that you have for my grandma or the love that you have for somebody that loves my grandma. And so understanding that, again, the love is an underlying theme that will be permeated through this, this service today. So Proverbs 31, 25, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Favor is deceitful, Proverbs 30. Or 25, 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Strength and honor are her clothes. And she shall rejoice in time to come. So as I stand here and give my little quick Black History Easter speech for just a few minutes. I won't be long-winded. <laughs> Watch yourself, bro. <laughs> that long-winded. Okay, I'm not lying. I'm sorry. Sorry, Bishop. Actually, I mean, he's my friend. I ain't even on the front of him. I got a question for y'all. If strength and honor are her clothing, what are you wearing? Ah, good question. What are you wearing? Yeah, good question. If you knew Grandma, you knew a couple things about her. She was a talented artist who could draw. She had outstanding penmanship. Now, for those of you who don't know what penmanship is, it means she could write well. And she could write even better in cursive. Uh, who's down here? Y'all do cursive? I heard they only do cursive in school. That's the stuff with the loopy lines. Y'all know what that is. But she had beautiful penmanship. She could draw like nobody else. She could remember things about your life and your schedule that you would never remember. Once you gave her directions to get somewhere, she never needed them again. She was an outstanding seamstress. She, she is, I'm sorry, Bishop, like you said, she is an outstanding seamstress. She is independent. She loves plants and gardening. She loves music. She loves to give advice. She, she loves to bake, especially Tony's pound cake. Where you at, Tony? <laughs> and I, I, we, I didn't announce the cheesecake because I didn't like it. I mean, I, people, she, it was good, but people like the cheesecake. But hey, that's, that's not very right. fun. But it was still the bomb because she made it. But she liked to bake. She had a special relationship with food. <laughs> she loved to cook it. And she loved to eat it. <laughs> okay. She loved family, which was often hand in hand with the food. She loved the home shopping network, QEC, as Kayla mentioned. She loved nice things, nice clothes. She's beautiful. She loves to laugh. She loved the Lord. She is, was, and will always be one of the strongest people that we all could ever meet. My grandma was always dressed to the T. She was sharp, y'all. 
Her house at 19490 Apple Line was always immaculate. As a matter of fact, I talked to one of my cousins the other day, uh, and, and he was like, yeah. He said, I have never seen a house that clean before when I was a kid and I went over there. She always drove nice new cars. But as she got older, she still dressed nice. But she didn't do it as often. As she got older, she moved uh, from her beautiful house on Apple Line to a smaller apartment. As she got older, she didn't buy another new car. She kept the car she had for about 10 years, 12 years or so. Now, if you know me, y'all know I love to run my mouth, right? That's, that's just what it is. It ain't had nothing in my life. I love to run my mouth, but this is one of the hardest things that I ever had to do. And yes, I'm, I'm grieving, and yes, I'm sad, and yes, all that stuff, but it's not hard because I'm grieving. It's not hard because I'm sad. It's hard because I don't want to mess this up and get in trouble with her. I don't want something falling from the ceiling hitting me in the head because of me not doing it like she wanted me to do. See, she told me something. She told me before she passed that she wanted me to do her eulogy. What an honor yes. that is yes. to have one of the people that you love and admire the most in this world come to you and say, I want you to speak well of me. Yes. So, I ain't trying to mess this up. I ain't trying to get no whooping, I ain't trying to get no punishment, and I ain't trying to get no long lecture. So it's pretty scary when a grown man can be afraid of somebody who's already going to glory, but I, I am, you know, I don't, I don't mess with her. But actually, check this out, it's not the whoopings that was ever a problem, because now I'm going to tell the truth about the whoopings. We had a conversation in the hospital. I hope she don't get up. The whoopings really didn't hurt, y'all. <laughs> she wasn't a whooper for real. It didn't hurt. We used to fake cry so she would stop, but it didn't hurt. That's probably, though, because of who she was, that she really didn't want hers, but it didn't hurt. Now, the punishments, the punishments, they didn't last that long. They weren't very long punishments. So it wasn't the whoopings, it wasn't the punishments, it wasn't that. What it was was those talks. Oh, Lord. I hated to hear over the phone when she would call home from work after I messed up on something. We need to talk in that baritone voice. We need to talk. I knew that meant 25 to 45 minutes of me hearing how I could have and should have done better. And she was right. But I needed to hear it for 45 minutes in a continuous loop like a broken record. <laughs> because if I would've got it in 10 minutes, I wouldn't have learned the lesson. So Delonte, Daryl, and Kayla, y'all know where you, I get it from. <laughs> the reason it took her 40 minutes to tell me that was because she opened her mouth with wisdom. And her tongue is the law of kindness. She knew I couldn't learn this in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. She knew it took 40, and it still took longer than that for me sometimes. But she was kind enough, caring enough, and loving enough to both counsel and teach me at the same time. Some parents need to take a lesson on that today. To teach and counsel at the same time is still love. As you heard, my work for 36 years before she retired, I remember every day she would leave every weekday to go to work. She would leave at 7.30 in the morning and she would come home at 4.30 in the afternoon. And God forbid, Marcus or George or Travis or anybody be parked in her driveway, she would come home from work and lay on that horn until you ran off that porch and almost killed yourself to get that car out of her driveway. That was every day during the week. And on the weekends when she was off, she made sure that I was up, even though I didn't want to be cutting the grass or, or, or doing my all-time favorite thing, which is planting road bushes. Hated it. <laughs> she did it because she looked well to the ways of her household and even not the breath of idleness. She took care of her house. She took care of her business. 
And she engraved me to do the very same thing. And I engraved my children to do the very same thing. She didn't believe in sitting around. She didn't believe in just doing nothing. That's why we're here and we're the people that we are today. Even as recently as eight months ago, Grandma lived by herself. She drove by herself. She cooked by herself. She did everything she needed to do. She was independent. She had a lot of doctor's appointments, though. She would drive to a lot of doctor's appointments. Oh, my God, she had doctor's appointments. And she would come and ask me. She would ask me. She said, Darnell, Darnell, in that very tall voice, how do I get to such and such? Now, she ain't messed with no GPS. She, she didn't need that GPS. All she needed to do was for me to tell her what streets to take, and she knew how to get there. 85 years old and doing that. She was wise. I used to refer to her doctor's appointments as work. I said, where are you going to work today at? Because <laughs> she had so many doctor's appointments. But she didn't waste her time. Don't waste your time. Family, don't waste our time. Our time is valuable. One Sunday morning when I was 12 years old, Grandma woke me up early and told me to get dressed because we were going to church. Now, we've been to church before. We, would, we, we went to a, another church and we would go, but uh, I told you she didn't believe in wasting time. You know, when I was 12, I did, so I didn't want to get up and go to church that morning. But she told me to get up and we're going to go to church. So we went to this new church. And after a few Sundays, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, a few Sundays, she joined this church, the notorious Oak Grove AME. <laughs> she didn't just join the church, she jumped in the church head first. As Marcus talked about, we grew up in that church, and it was so interesting. There's this little side note. We started going to this church, it was in the neighborhood, but when we went to the church, I found out that Marcus, who was one of my best friends, actually, I didn't know, we were in the same class, and we ended up going to the same church together. So we formed that bond from just her taking me to that church, and being in that church, and then that bond spread out, and we brought this brother, one of my other best friends, and Donald Crea, and Demetrius Anderson, into our lives, so all of that. But she jumped in head first when she got to church. She became active, she served, she sang, she worshiped. And after a few more Sundays, I joined the church at 12 years old. I became active, I served, I sang, I worshiped. She never pushed me to join the church when she joined that day. Most parents would drag their kids up there kicking and screaming. As a matter of fact, I think I did that to my kids before. Drug them up there, kicking and screaming. She never did. She let me make my own decision to walk down that, those aisles of that church and to publicly walk up and confess our Lord Savior Jesus Christ as my Lord, to believe that he died for me, he was raised from the dead for me. She allowed me to do that, that his death, resurrection, and burial was real, and that he lived with God the Father. I told y'all earlier how my grandma always had new cars, and then she, the last few years, she kept the car she had for about 10 years. I told y'all she moved from a big, beautiful house to a smaller apartment. I told you earlier how my grandma is just beautiful. She's a beautiful person, beautiful woman. My grandma did these things because she knew <laughs> that favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. She knew nice things don't mean everything. She knew that although she was always beautiful, she knew beauty was no problem. But she also knew that a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. That's why she set the example for me. She didn't push me, she led me. And as my grandma's body began to break down, my prayer my prayer, it went from healing and complete restoration to God, take her out of pain and give her peace. It went from pain to peace. I want her to be at peace. God not only honored my prayer because he is God and he's sovereign and he's all-knowing and he's wise and he's wonderful. He sees all. He knows all. He didn't just honor my prayer. He took my prayer to the next level. Giving her of the fruit of her hands and letting her own works praise her in the gates. He took her from being in pain to her being in peace.
to giving her praise. That's why we're here right now. And we should praise him right now for her life. So thank God because we can praise him for her life. That's not a praise. 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 God is so all-knowing that he recognized that my prayer wasn't enough. Pain to peace, to praise. And it speaks of that. It speaks of this in this virtuous woman. It said, but she knew that she feared, feared the Lord and she shall be praised. So we praise her right now. We praise him for her. We praise her. I'm almost done. When I was younger, I often questioned the many things that my grandma made me do. Why did I have to go to the grocery store with her? Jesus. <laughs> Why did I have to bring in all the groceries by myself? Why did I have to pull her boots off in the wintertime? <laughs> yep. Why did I have to go with her to make any big purchases at the car dealerships and appliance stores? Why did she and my great-grandmother, after I got beat up by my friends, always tell me, you better go back outside and fight, otherwise you gotta deal with me. <laughs> Why did I have to learn how to cook? Why did I have to learn how to clean? Why did I have to learn get up on weekends? Why did I have to go do yard work? Why did I have to get good grades? Why did I have to get, get a good job, a job while I was in high school? Why do I have to go to college? Why, why, why do I have to do all this stuff? I never asked her really, y'all, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but I thought it. Finally, I figured out the answer. At least to most of the questions. And it took me a little longer in some cases took some, a lot of mistakes and bumped in my head. But I figured out, when she said, if you don't stand up for yourself, who will? Okay. I figured it out when she said, you know how to do everything, so now you don't have to rely on somebody else to do it for you. I figured it out when she said she would call me instead of calling my boys, my big grown, big head boys that lived 10 minutes from her, just like I did, to come get the groceries out the car. I figured it out when she called me and made me do it. <laughs> when I would get the groceries out the car, and she would ask in amazement as I walked in <laughs> with seven grocery bags at a time on each arm. You got them all at one time? <laughs> and I would say to her, do you know who grandson I am? <laughs> you trained me for this. I figured it out when I was going through one of the hardest times in my life. And she said to me, don't look at things for what you want them to be. Look at things for what they are. I figured it out when she said to me, the most profound thing ever. I can't teach you how to be a man, but I can teach you how a man should be. So now to the question, what are you wearing? Strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. She laughed. She laughed. She loved to laugh. Grandma would play games with us until she couldn't play the games no more. Her aunt, auntie, they would play games with us. When we do family game night and holidays, she loved to laugh. She laughed through her pain. She laughed through everything. Most of the people in this room are here by either family blood or by association blood. Grandma wore strength and honor. She laughed through life. She rejoiced in good and bad times. She was quick-witted and always ready to execute her quick wit on Delante's head. She used to let him have it, boy. <laughs> so when I ask the question, what are you wearing? I already know the answer. The Rinda and Vanessa are wearing strength. They're wearing strength displayed when they had to take care of and care for their elderly mother. The best they could do, they did. The winner is wearing glo the gloves of clothing design and creation because she can sew like nobody's business. She's wearing the gift that was passed down from her mother of being a phenomenal seamstress. When I ask what you wear, Vanessa, Kayla, Taylor, Riley, they're all wearing the smock of a talented artist. The smock they inherited from their mother and their great grandmother, who could paint, who could design ceramic dolls, who could who could do anything with her hands because the gift was in her hands. Darian is wearing the garment of a gourmet chef, which was passed down from his grandma's passion and desire to cook delicious meals for her family because she loved them, and that's how she expressed her love. Kayla is wearing the hat of a baker 
that hat that was donned on her head by the blessing of her great grandmother's love of making lemon drizzle and apple and regular palm cakes. Grandma wore the fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Grandma wore love, the love of her family. She wore joy, the joy that she had about her family. She wore the peace, the peace to be able to endure 85 years of life. She wore long-suffering, the long-suffering to be the person she was supposed to be. She wore gentleness to embrace everybody in this room that came in contact with her. She wore the goodness that shines and resonates on that smile in her picture. She wore the meekness and the temperance, the humility of just being a woman of God. The word spirit in, in this Galatians 5.22 and, and the fruit of the spirit it is translated as pneuma. Where we get the word pneumonia. It means wind or breath. As you think about this question, as I try to get through this, the question of what are you wearing, I want you to think about pneuma, where we get pneumonia from. I want you to think about this idea of breath and how grandma's breath was contagious. Her love of cooking was contagious as she breathed on you. Her love of people was contagious as she breathed on you. Her love of God is contagious as she breathed on you. We didn't get our talents from nobody. It just, it just didn't come out of nowhere. God blessed us with her and gave us those talents because of who she was. So the next time you think about it, you need to recognize that that's contagious. Breathe that on your family. Breathe that on people you come in contact with. If she breathed on you, you felt her love, her joy, you felt her peace. Family, family, family. I know that I can be hard to deal with. I know I can be something else, but I do it because I love y'all. This is my heart and all of my hearts. And the reality is, is that we always should honor her with our own strength and dignity. We don't all have the capacity to be who she was, and God didn't design us all to do it, but he gave us special gifts, yeah. and we need to embrace those gifts. So welcome the affection from the fruit of the spirit, mm -hmm. the peace, the love, the joy, the contagious, yeah. the pneumonia that she gave. Welcome it. Yeah. And more importantly, honor grandma by honoring God. If you don't know him, give your life to him. You won't be perfect. But it's going to perfect your mind and your heart and make you want to do better and be better. Take that same walk that I walked when I was 12 years old. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and he was raised from the dead with all power. Ma, you lived a good life and ran a great race. Thank you for infecting me and everybody else with the, the virus of the fruit of the spirit. Now that you've gone from pain to peace, we will 